Hi everyone, this video is about how we model power electronic system for a three phase power conversion. We are going to talk specifically about the main three representations of three phase systems. The first is the long known ABC frame representation, which is the classic structure that everyone is familiar with, which represents the phases of each phase of a three phase system as separate entities the A, the B, and the C components, both of current and voltage. Then we are going to introduce two alternative representations of a three-phase system, which can be rotating electric machine, a three-phase power system, or any three-phase load, namely the alpha-beta representation and the DQ frame representation. The ABC frame is widely known from undergraduate courses as the main way to represent three-phase power, though it is often represented in a static way. It stems from the fact that the three phase voltages can be represented as independent phasors in a plane in which we place three axes which are 120 degrees apart from each other. Each phase voltage, VA, VB or VC, oscillates along its own axis during that line cycle. Any voltage or current that we care about at any given time can be thus represented as a composition of these three components, which we will call the ABC components. The first thing we notice about the ABC frame is that the axes are not perpendicular to each other because we have three components. But since our system is of three phase nature and the voltages are actually 120 degrees phased out of each other, we can directly relate any voltage to the components in each phase. It is the most directly correlated representation to the actual three phase system, but always need three components to represent any given phase. Take for an example a synchronous electrical motor or generator in which the stator windings are physically placed 120 degrees apart from each other. As the rotor rotates at constant speed, its magnetic field sweeps across the stator windings. The magnetic flux peaks at each winding displaced in time by one third of the whole cycle when the rotor completes a turn. So does the EMF the induced voltage, but lagging behind at 9 degrees due to faraday lanes law. The synchronous machine is a good three-phase system to take as an example for understanding most of what we are going to talk about in this lecture, because it helps us to understand the concept of a space vector or space phaser. The space vector is the core idea behind the control of electrical machines on the so-called field-oriented control, FOC, and is also used in control of active and reactive components of voltage-sourced converters connected to the grid power. So we will carry on with the idea of a space vector, first here introduced in the ABC frame. Suppose that the rotor is composed of a permanent magnet or an electromagnet fed by DC current, thus of constant magnetic flux. If we feed three-phase balanced current to the three windings, we will create the following oscillating magnetic fields centered at the rotor. These fields are, along with the A, B and C axis respectively, at the geometric center of each concentrated winding, and thus can be thought as a direct product of the currents that produce them individually. If we make a vector composition of the three fields generated, by means of a geometric vector sum, we observe that it generates the rotating magnetic fields from the center of the rotor to the tip of the stator. Observe the tip of the outermost vector sweeping smoothly across the stator as a single entity. This is analogous to the rotating special vector generated by the three phase currents. This other figure shows in red the magnetic field that rotates along with the rotor of a two-pole synchronous motor. The green arrow represents the spatial composition of the three-phase currents that generate a rotating magnetic field on the stator, which is then followed at synchronous speed by the rotor field. Note that we place each of the three axes of the ABC frame perpendicular to the plane of each of the three windings, oriented upwards according to the right-hand rule. Thus, when phase A current is at its peak, the green vector is parallel and along the A-axis. When the phase B current is at its peak, the green vector is parallel and along the B-axis. When the phase C current is at its peak, 
the green vector is parallel and along the z-axis and so forth. If we abstract now from the motor and generalize the idea of the rotating spatial vector or rotating phasor, we can see how any given rotating phasor, time varying or not, can be represented by their A, B and C components, analogous to the winding currents that together generate the rotating magnetic field in a synchronous machine. Though directly correlated to the three phase currents or voltages, the ABC frame representations in a plane is fairly complex due to the natural presence of three components. In a plane, the minimal number of components we really need to represent any given vector is only two, a Cartesian system of two perpendicular axes. In other words, a rotating magnetic field in a machine or a rotating space fade in any other three phase system can be actually generated by a pair of current or voltage components 9 degrees apart from each other. This is actually the principle behind single phase rotating machines. Two windings place the physically 9 degrees apart from each other, fed by currents that are 90 degrees apart in phase. The alphabet representation stems from this fact and uses two orthogonal axes to represent any given space vector or a phasor. We place the alpha axis along the A-axis, right ones, so they coincide, geometrically speaking, and the beta axis is placed perpendicular to the alpha axis, upwards. This gives kind of a cosine-sine representation for any space vector in the plane. The alpha-beta transformation is derived from geometric relations between the ABC frame and the alpha-beta frame and is named the Clark transformation, after Edith Clark, who first proposed in 1951. Clark was the first woman to earn an MS in electrical engineering from MIT in 1919. These relations are shown here, in their power invariant matrix form. The V-alpha and V-beta components are found from the three-phase voltages VA, VB and VC. The third component shown here, V0, is related to the zero sequence component of voltage, which will exist only if the sum of VA, VB and VC does not equal zero. We can now show how any given space vector can be represented by means of their alpha-beta components in a phasor diagram. Note that the actual vector, here shown in baby blue, was generated by a three-phase system but is now decomposing only two orthogonal components. We have reduced the complexity of our analysis by one degree, enabling to transform the problem of controlling a three-phase converter, that is, three half-bridge legs, to a problem in which we control two equivalent subsystems. Both components are also shown here in the time axis, in which alpha corresponds to a cosine wave and beta corresponds to a sine wave. The alpha-beta frame representation is very important in understanding various aspects of the control of grid tie converters and is at the core of the instantaneous power theory, a generalization on power theories in which three-phase power, both active and reactive, along with effects due to harmonics and line imbalance, is described by alpha and beta components for means of electronic power conditioning. It is also used in space vector modulation, SVN, as a mean of calculating the optimum firing times and transitions of each bridge leg in a three-phase voltage source converter, a VSC, with reduced complexity due to the presence of only two components rather than three in the ABC frame representation. The last representation we will talk about is the DQ frame representation. DQ stands for Direct and Quadrature Components, and it is a rotating frame representation. Let's understand this. Let's once again imagine a synchronous electrical machine. What if, instead of placing a static pair of axes, such as the alpha-beta frame, which are reference to the state of the machine, what if you place a pair of orthogonal axes rotating along with the rotor of the machine? Notice first that we place the direct axis pointing at the same direction as the rotor magnetic field and the quadrature axis is placed orthogonally in the same manner that we place the beta axis in the alpha-beta frame. Our system of coordinates will now rotate at the speed of the rotor, 
that is, synchronous speed in this case. Therefore, our space vector will be static from the point of view of this new rotating reference frame and its component, namely the direct D component and quadrature Q component, will be constant since both the frame and the vector are rotating at the same speed, the angular speed of the rotor. The DQ representation greatly simplifies control of AC machines because we can simply use PI or PID controllers designed to track constant, that is DC references, rather than sinusoidal references. In the ABC frame, we need to track three sinusoidal references, one for each phase. In the alpha beta frame, we need to track two sinusoidal references, one for each orthogonal component. But in the DQ frame, we track constant DC reference, which can be well tracked by the common PI and PID controllers. These controllers in the rotating reference frame are therefore designed to control the direct and quadrature components of the space vector, although we now need means of measuring or estimating the angular speed of the machine. In the case of a grid type converter, we will need to track the grid frequency and phase angle. The transformations to the DQ frame are shown here in their matrix form. Notice that along with the voltages, we will also need to input the current phase angle theta of the vector we are trying to track. In the case of a synchronous machine, this is the absolute rotor angle, which we can measure by using an encoder. In the case of a grid type converter, this is the phase angle of line voltage referred to the phase A, which we can track using a phase locked loop, a PLL.